In this video, we're going to learn how to get started with using Google Sheets API in Python. Now, Google Sheets API is probably one of the most difficult APIs to use when it comes to Google API products. And the reason being is because you have uh, so many different layers and properties, configurations, etc. Essentially, it's a spreadsheet. You're trying to use the API to manipulate the uh, spreadsheet. Now, when it comes to use cases using the API, you can automate your reportings and data analysis. And you can integrate your spreadsheet with third party APIs, such as you can uh, import different data sets from different uh, systems, such as Salesforce, BigQuery, and etc. And with using Google Sheets API, you can enhance your application's functionality to the next level. Now, before we can use Google Sheets API, we need to enable the API. So go into Google Cloud Console. And if you're a new user, simply create an account and it's free. And for new users, once you create an account, simply click on the drop down and create a new project and follow the instruction to create the project. All right, so here I'm going to expand navigation menu. Then I'm going to go into APIs and services, then click on library. Now I want to search for Google Sheets. Now make sure that the API is enabled. Next, we need to create an OAuth concern page. So go back to navigation menu and go back to APIs and services. Now here you can see this option, OAuth concern screen. So the OAuth concern screen is going to be the page where you display your app's information and prompting the users to grant permissions to allow the app to access the user's information or data on the app's behalf. All right, so because I already uh, set up the consent screen, I'm going to go into a different project. Okay, I think this one might work. Now, depending on your use case, you either set to internal or external. And the main difference is that with internal user type, you don't need to submit your app for verification first with the external user type. So this is basically if you want to create a commercial application or plugin for uh, third party users. But for this lesson, I'm going to uh, choose internal. Oh, because, uh, okay, so because I'm using a Gmail account, not a workspace account, so I cannot use internal. Now let me choose external and create. Now here I simply follow the instruction to set up the consent screen. So for the app name, I'm going to set this to Google Sheets tutorial. Then enter your email. Now everything else is optional except Except here, we need to enter the developer's contact information. Now, save and continue, and that should be it. And once we create the consent screen, we can set up our OAuth 2 account. Now, go back to APIs and services. Now, this time, we want to click on credentials. Oh, okay, actually, me go back to my original project. On the top, click on Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID. For local development, we can choose Desktop Application. And let's name this as Google Sheets OAuth and create the account. Then we need to click on download JSON to save the client secret file. Let me navigate into my project folder and I'll name the file client secret. Now in case if you need to regenerate the file, you need to delete the account and recreate the account. If you simply just want to redownload the client secret file, so you can go back to the credentials page and click on download OAuth client. 
Now at this point, we have finished step one, two, four. Now we can dive into the Python script development. Now launch your terminal. And to work with Google Sheets API, we need to download three libraries. The first one's going to be Google Auth HTTP lib2. Then we have Google Auth OAuth lib. And the last one's going to be working with Google Sheets API specific. And once we install the packages, we can dive into the examples. Now for this video, I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is going to be how to create a Google Sheets file. And you have a note, if you want to delete a Google Sheets file, you will need to use Google Drive's API. And for the second example, I'm going to show you how to read, write, and clear cells in Google Sheets. I'm going to create two files, demo1.py, demo2.py. Now, because I personally use Google Sheets API quite often, I created a module called Google APIs to help me to simplify the uh, client instance creation. Now, let's look at the source code here. So inside this function, I have this function called create service. And we can reuse this function to uh, create different Google Sheets API instance, like Google Sheets instance, YouTube instance, Gmail instance, and so on. And here I have another function to convert RFC uh, daytime to daytime object. So this one is not going to be relevant for this lesson. From the input statement, I'm going to import the create service function. To create a Google Sheets instance, we need to provide four things. We need to provide the file path of the client secret file, the API name, API version, and the permission scope that we want to grant to the app. And once we have those four things, we can use the create service function to connect to Google Sheets endpoint. Now, here let me, let me put this uh, side by side. Now, let me go ahead and uh, run this code block. Now, because this is my first time connecting to the Google Sheets API in this account, so I'm going to choose my account. On this page, I want to click on events. Then click on this link to proceed. So this page right here is the consent screen. And it's going to be the app name that you specify in the consent screen. Now here I'm going to click on continue to grant permission to the app. And once you see the message, the authentication flow has complete. You may close the window, simply close the tab. Now to go back to the partial folder. Now here you should see a new folder got created. And the folder is going to be called token files. So basically inside the create service function, I have a procedure building to save the token assets. So next time if you need to connect to Google Sheets API, you can simply load the assets token and don't have to go to the authentication again. Now to create a spreadsheet, a brand new spreadsheet, it can be easy and difficult at the same time. Once it's easy, is you can simply reference the service object. And actually, let's do this. So let's print the methods of the service object. Now, if we look at the output here, so the last one here is the spreadsheet and method. Now, this method basically represents the Google Sheets endpoint.
And to create a brand new spreadsheet, we can reference the spreadsheets method dot create dot execute. Now, if I print the response object, and here's the species object output. And to get the species link, it's going to be under this uh, URL key right here. Oh, it should uh, should be species URL, not URL. Right, so if I open the URL, and here's the spreadsheet that I just created. Now, if you need to specify the properties, such as how many pages, it should not pages, how many tabs that you want to have, as well as the tab color, how many rows and columns in each uh, worksheet. In that case, that is going to be a little bit tricky because you know, let's go into the documentation. And I'll link the documentation in the description below. Now, if we look at the species resource, now this is what we call request body. So these are all the properties that you can specify when you create a spreadsheet. So you can define the name ranges, specify how many sheets that you want to create. Inside the sheets property, you can specify how you want to configure the sheets or tabs. You can also use Google Sheets API to link to third party data sources and so on. And the reason why I say this can be a little bit difficult is because you have so many layers when it comes to dealing with the properties. But let me just give you an example. So let's say I want to create a, another spreadsheet. And I want to uh, give my spreadsheet a title. And I also want to create multiple tabs. For the first tab, I want to create 20 rows and 12 counts. And for the second tab, I want to set that to 10 rows and 10 counts. And to do that, so you need to set up a request body. And that request body is going to contain the spreadsheet properties that is going to take effect when you create the spreadsheet. And I can run the same methods, service that spreadsheets that create. Now this time I need to provide the request body to the body parameter that execute. All right, so if I go in the round, the, oh, I forgot to create the request body. Now if I make the request call, now open the tab. And my spreadsheet now has a title. And I have two tabs. The first tab has 20 rows and 12 columns. And the second tab should have 10 columns and 10 rows. Now I want to grab the spreadsheet ID. Okay, now let's move on to the second example. I want to go back to the documentation. Now, when it comes to read and write cells in Google Sheets, so we have two uh, core methods. One is the update method, and the other one is the append method. And the difference between updates and append methods, updates were overriding the existing contents of the cells. First, append will simply add new rows at the end of the table. And if you need to update multiple ranges, then you can use the batch methods. All right, so let's do demo to actually I already create a file. And let's do this. I'm going to hard code the spreadsheet ID. Or you can get the spreadsheet ID from the URL. All right, so I'm going to recreate the service object. I'm going to go ahead and run this code block to create the service object. Now, because I have a token file that is available in my project folder. 
So the create service function is going to, first of all, uh, check if the token files folder exists. And if this, then it's going to check if the Google Sheets token uh, file is available to, uh, for loading. Now let's put this in my spreadsheet side by side. All right, so I'll start with the update method. Now to insert a table or records, you need to set the record set as a nest array. So basically in this nest array, each childless or child array is going to be treated as a row. So this is going to be my first row, which is going to be the header. And the second row to the fifth row, those are going to be my data. They will need to create a request body. They will need to uh, specify the values key. Then we can provide the uh, records. And to insert the records, we can reference service.spreadsheets.values.update. They will need to specify the spreadsheet ID, the cell address or cell range that you want to insert the data set. Then we have different value input options. Then finally, we're going to supply the data set. Now, if I run my code here, and that's going to insert the table. Now, let's say you want to update the table with new records. In this case, I'm going to insert five more new records. And I'll simply run the same request here. And that's going to update the table in the spreadsheet. Now this time, instead of overriding the existing table, I want to add new records. I'm going to create three new records and same request body. Now this time, instead of using the update method, I can use the append method. And I think I can set this to A1 because the append method will automatically detect the table cell range and figure out the last row's location. So let's give it a try. Oh. Here my range target is going to be A1. But when I run the request here, he add three new records to this table here. Now if you need to read the cells, In that case, you'll use service.spreadsheets.values and we use the get method. And here you need to specify the spreadsheet ID and the cell range that you want to read. So I can, let me go ahead and run this request. And let's look at the response object. Now if we look at the output here, so all the records is sitting in the values key. So we can retrieve the rows. Then we can iterate each row. And to print the records. This is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this lesson. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.